Hi everyone, my name is KG and I'm here with another video. Thanks again for tuning in. Anesthesia is one of the most common medical procedures in the world, but it remains a mystery. According to neuroscientists, anesthesia is different from sleep because a person under its influence does not dream. I find that to be quite an interesting fact. The time between being knocked out and waking up is literally and completely out of memory. You have no conscious awareness of yourself as a person in a body, yet you are not dead. In this sense, being under anesthesia is most likely what death feels like. Another interesting thing is that even though a person becomes unconscious during anesthesia, brain activity can still be observed. That is another fascinating fact about anesthesia. Brain death is when brain activity stops completely, thus causing a neurological disconnection to other systems of the body, including the respiratory system. It is said that the reason why pain is not felt during anesthesia is because anesthesia messes up brain connections. In other words, Anesthesia does not completely disconnect your nervous system. It merely misfires it, or we can say it temporarily tempers with the connections. Effect of anesthesia wears off. The right connections come back automatically. This whole thing about how anesthesia works may actually carry some vital clues in terms of the existence of the soul and the afterlife. I say this because even though conscious awareness is absent in anesthetized patients, brain activity remains. The only difference is that the brain activity is uncoordinated and undirected. What is that thing that keeps the body alive even when there is no conscious awareness? How does breathing continue if there is no conscious awareness during anesthesia? The only logical explanation is that there is something that animates or gives the body life, and when that thing leaves the brain, we call that death. The brain is like a computer hardware, and the soul is the software that gives it structure, rationale, and coordination. The unique identity of a computer is in the installed software. In the same way, the real identity of a person is contained in their soul. The soul uses the body as a tool to have a physical experience. And when the soul is done with the physical experience, it takes off the body and again we call that death. Just like software, the soul is not tangible or physically observable. The fact that we can't see software does not mean it does not exist. The fact that the soul is not visible does not mean it does not exist either. Though we can't see it, we can clearly see its effects. There is something that leaves the body at the point of death, which leaves the body lifeless. What is that thing? Patients who are in a vegetative state have lost their sense of coordination. In other words, their hardware, specifically their CPU or the brain, is damaged, but they are still alive. Why is that so? It is because what keeps the body alive is not the connections of the brain. What keeps the body alive is the energy force that gives the entire body life. I believe that is the soul. It is like electricity without which the hardware and the software can't function. But the soul is more than just a power source for the body. It also contains the existential memory of an individual. The individual is the soul, not the body. Everything your soul has ever encountered in its various incarnations is recorded in the memory bank of your soul. If the soul is the essence of what we are, does that mean it survives physical death? I think so. I think it does, and even science is now discovering scientific proof of this. Could it be that reincarnation is not such a far-fetched concept 
after all.